Recite your baseline. In blood black inferno began to feed. I met it with barb overpowered, within barb overpowered, within barb overpowered, within one meta. Fuck off, barbarian! In dreadfully distinct against the rogue, a tall white bardie. Franz, Franz. Do you have a ranged option? Franz, Franz. Do they let you throw Franz? Franz, Franz. When you're not immediately ranged, do they let you throw Franz? Franz, Franz. Barbo P. Barbo P. What's it like to be the most overpowered class? Barbo P. Barbo P. Do they teach you to chase? Finger to W. Barbo P. Barbo P. Do you long for being OP? Barbo P. Barbo P. Do you dream about being meta? Barbo P. What's it like to be the most overpowered class? Barbo P. Barbo P. Do you feel like your class has meta? Barbo P. Barbo P. Within meta, Barbo's OP. Within meta, Barbo P. Why don't you say that three times? Within meta, Barbo P. Within meta, Barbo P. Within meta, Barbo P. We're done. Retro Ray. You can pick up your bonus. Thank you, sir. Like, we got to allow 24 hours before we really start doing it. And I think people are, under are underestimating how important kills are going to become. Retro Ray, though, the kill leader. Wait! Grunk the smelly Bok G has been the man absolutely terrorizing everyone. Completed and came third in the Nick Bok G $5,000 tournament. And I ended with the single most kills and the highest kill death ratio of all the players during the leaderboard grind to Demigod. I obviously did not get Demigod. And that is because I am not a bosser. I didn't know how to boss. But I have believe. Sorry. But I believe that I have figured out what is the optimal setup and the optimal gameplay for the Barbarian class if you are playing solo. So we'll start with perks. We'll start with then gear. We'll start with perks. Then we'll move to gear. Then we'll move to like what kind of stats you're looking for. And then I'll show you clips from the tournament throughout the whole video. And I will explain how I'm thinking about most of my fights versus most of the classes. And where I'm trying to position myself on the map given what map you have available to you. So first things first, I'm running the old school, normal solo barbarian skills now. No new skills, no roar, no nothing. It's just going to be the same as before. Crush, Robust, Iron Will, and Berserker. Rage and Achilles as your skills. The reason why I am running these skills is as follows. In solos, you cannot get away without having Crush. Everyone that's playing like that without Crush is either... In incredibly awkward lobbies where they're not really playing really aggressive players and or are extremely extremely outlier scenarios that they can get away without using crush these are players like skinny pete for instance doesn't use crush he uses his stylus on a pad which gives him incredibly f easy sorry i don't want to say easy which gives him an incredible ability to flick his character around so he doesn't need to rely on rushing people down as much because he's using a jump backwards tech which is extremely hard to emulate with a mouse unless you practice for an extremely long period of time and he's able to use really off and off meta perks and skills this is the best bang for your buck this will help the most people you use these four perks and then rage and achilles you need rage and achilles in your um skills bar because you can no longer afford to have Roar. With two all being in the game, every other class has disproportionately benefited from the plus two all stat changes. And I will go to a quick little explanation as to why. When you're playing Barbarian, the three stats or the three um, things that you gain from all your stats that you're getting and all your gear you're putting on is HP, damage, and speed. So that's your ability to tank. Not just your raw HP, but your ability to tank, your damage, and how fast you're swinging, and your speed, how fast you're moving. When you get plus two all on all your skills, I mean all your item pieces, you get more of that, which you already have because that's what you've built for. When you get extra points into will, knowledge, and resourcefulness, these stats 
do not help you. Resourcefulness does not help you because 99% of the time you're crushing chests open and you're crushing doors open. When you're getting more knowledge, it does not help you unless you get plus two all on every single piece of your gear and you happen to roll knowledge on another piece of gear, which you wouldn't want anyway. And then maybe you can use an invisibility pot, which is not worth it. So knowledge does not help you. And then you get will, which does help you to an extent because it gives you magic resistance. But we already have enough with our base will plus iron will. Like getting any more will doesn't really help you. And it's better to get flat magic resistance if you're trying to build magic resistance. But on the other hand, if you're a wizard player or a caster player, bards, wizards, warlocks, all of these other people have disproportionately benefited from the two all increase because not only do they get all the stuff that barbs get, meaning they get to be tankier, do more melee damage, have more move speed, uh, pull out their gear faster and their weapons faster. They also get all the benefits from the other skills, which they desperately need, which is having more spell slash buff duration for curses and improves your base magic resistance, which is good for wizards and warlocks. Then you get uh, knowledge, which lets you have bigger memory capacity, which is good for wizards, warlocks, and bards, and makes your speed of your spells go faster, and you get written resourcefulness, which all those characters need, particularly bards, who got the biggest buff from the two all patch because they need literally all the stats, which is why they're probably one of the best classes in the game to play your songs faster and uh, all your other stuff that you normally do. So every single class that isn't fighter, rogue, and barb... Uh, well, actually, I shouldn't say that. The, the caster classes got, and, and song players, Bard included, um, got particularly more out of the two all item pieces. So when you're playing fighter and you're playing um, barbarian, you basically got nothing in term, out of two all. Rogues and rangers got a little bit more than you um, because, or than us, because um, they install traps and rogues generally want to be able to just get two all because they benefit from most of the stats. They need resourcefulness for opening up doors and stuff like that. Same with rangers, placing traps, opening doors. Whereas uh, barbs don't really care. Fighters care to an extent, but they have base 15 on all their stats. So they're usually pretty well-rounded. Um, and yeah, clerics also, I forgot about them. They are also included into the major buff. They got a huge buff with this patch because two all just disproportionately benefits all those kind of characters. That being said, it doesn't mean that Barb is inherently trash, although it is certainly worse off than a lot of other classes, even though nobody wants to admit this, because what happens when you're playing this game is nobody wants to admit their class is overpowered. I am fully capable of admitting that Barb is still not dumpster tier useless, but it's certainly um, having an issue. Now, in trios, on the other hand, Barb is extremely overpressive right now, so if you don't mind what game mode you want to play... The best game mode for you to play is trios because trios buff all melodies king and because of the new gear pieces you can achieve in trios and then you can just be filled with the buffs from a bard and or a wizard or a cleric with the overheal. You don't need to have that many stats on barb so your character is actually fairly good. The problem is it's, it's not the barb class that's good in trios or the barb character itself that's good in trios. The problem is it's, it's all the other classes got buffed which makes playing Barb and Trios actually viable. Same with the gear. The new gear pieces let you just get more MDR than you would normally physically be able to get on Barb and still be playable. So your class can get up to 60-60 PDR, MDR, which normally wasn't possible. But that's not because the class is good. The class is actually pretty bad in and of itself. It just relies on you getting the new pieces of gear and having your buff ball team force you into the meta that being said i don't really care about trios that much because i rarely play it and i like to play solos and duos and in solos and duos barb is okay it's not dumpster dog shit tier but it has really big faults given how the meta is being played the meta right now to get demigod which is what everyone wants to do is survive so people are going to play like babies the entire time even though kills are worth more than before in terms of AP, people are going to be playing way more of a scared game because 
dying resets hours and hours of progress. That's why nobody got Demigod during the tournament that we were in. And that's why only one player currently on the leaderboard, Vincent, has Demigod. And a lot of these players are playing on slightly less populated servers, which is why a lot of people are even getting this high, because they're able to just loot and loot and loot bossing. So, you know, it's not that bad of a system. They're like one or two tweaks away from getting it right. So let's go to gear. Every piece of gear that I'm running is basically the same at all points for the most part. In duos, it can be slightly different. You can get you can go slightly slower, but basically it'll always be the same. You're looking for, and I'm not running that gear right currently because I'm just running uh, kind of like a random throw to get up kit, but you're looking for two all loose trousers. You're looking for two all adventure tunic, the highest you can get. Obviously, if you can only get it uncommon because they're all expensive, then just get uncommon. It's fine. You want some sort of leather cap with agility on it, preferably a three roll of agility. And then you want one all rings, preferably on Agi, and then two all uh, amulet, preferably on like, uh, or sorry, one all rings, preferably on uh, dexterity. And the higher the dex roll on the rings, like if you can get it rare, the better. And then you want um, two all on a necklace of peace if you can get it. Then your boots will always be adventure boots with plus five move speed if you can get it. I usually just go for rare ones because they're pretty cheap. If you can get higher, get higher. Same with the helmet. If you can get agility, three, and then get epic, get epic. And then any other good stat that you can take is like raw HP. Um, any sort of armor penetration is really valuable. So anytime you can get those extra rolls, raw HP, armor rating, uh, magic resist because they've all been increased. Um, get those rolls if you can as your secondary rolls, but those are the primary rolls you're looking for on your on your items. So you want agility, two all, two all, one all, one all. Here you're looking for two all, agility, and then on your adventure boots, you're looking for a flat move speed roll. And then cape is just like a filler roll, but again, try to get armor penetration on your cape because it can roll higher than most of the other pieces of gear that can roll it. And you're basically set. For weapons, I am almost always running the Bardiche. Currently, I'm using this wine hander on this kit, but I'm almost always running the Bardiche, and I will show you in-game play why. But on your Bardiche, when you go to buy it, you're searching for Epic Bardiche with Armor Penetration. Armor Penetration equals more weapon damage than you would get from the three weapon damage roll. Always try to get a 10 roll Armor Pen if you can, or higher. The reason for this is because now that everyone has two all and everyone has access to more pieces of gear, on average, most players are running up to 30% PDR. 11% armor pen is far more damage than getting a flat three weapon damage on a roll for a weapon. So always prioritize armor penetration over weapon, over weapon damage. Same with fist power and all that stuff. And then following that, the second roll you want to get, if you can afford to get it, is you want armor pen is number one. Then you want... Physical damage bonus, because the physical damage bonus roll max has been increased to 10 plus percent. So you, if you can roll 12 and 12 on uh, armor pen plus physical damage bonus and then get like an HP roll, you're good. If you can get armor, physical damage bonus, and then the weapon damage roll, you're good. But those are the three rolls you're looking for now. Don't worry about anything else for the most part. Buff duration isn't so bad on barb uh, items either because we're running rage, so it lets us run faster. But that's what we're running for. And then in my secondary, I'm still running Viking Sword, and I'm not using shield. This is very important. Do not use shield, for the most part. Here's the trade-off you're going to be making when you don't use shield. You will be better versus every single class in the game, except for wizards sometimes. In the tournament, I killed millions of people by using my lantern to proc Achilles on squishy classes. The current meta is rogue hand crossbow running away from you. Um, clerics who are running super high move speed and ma massive add magic damage so that they can just nuke you to death and then throw Molotovs on you. Warlocks, same deal. They're all running Chris Dagger, Blow of Corruption, Molotovs, Cancer. So you need to be able to close the distance on them as well as soon as you proc their uh, Phantomize. Um, Rangers are running Survival Bow with true damage, which is extremely Cancer, and they're running mass move speed. Same with Bard. Same, they're all running this 
Everyone is running mass move speed build with as much true damage as possible or true magic as possible, and they're playing a kiting game, which really sucks for us. Now, if you have a shield, you will be able to block some arrows. If you have a shield, you will be able to block some spells. But the problem is, is when you have that on, you are significantly slower, and the odds of you catching up to the person are just going to be lower. So the trade-off you're taking is you have the lantern to catch them, but then you have to be careful that once you go in, you don't get magic missile. I die to magic missile a shit ton in this tournament because wizards do not fucking die in two hits anymore because of ice shield and the uh, barrier prick, which are two extremely strong pricks. Ice shield and all on hit effect abilities like dark reflect probably need to be removed from the game and they may get nerfed. I don't think so. I think Iron Mace wants it like that, but just be aware of that. So the goal is to get it close to them. And then if they if they start to cast that shit, you got to back up and just chuck as many frannies as you can at them while circling. If you can't, you have to completely disengage and then just keep baiting out the spells. I know it's impossible because they have spell overlord, but you have to try your best or that at least you let the, you get away from them. Um, wizards are like really, really bad for us right now. Same with um, rogues to an extent. If they're competent players, they'll never truly ever engage you until you're already dead. So just keep that in mind. It's going to be a big kiting game. So you need to use the map to your advantage. And I'll show you a couple neat barb tricks that I was doing during the tournament that helped me catch lots of players um, playing the game. So uh, tip number one is whenever you're fighting a caster and or person that's trying to run from you is to always get high ground. Everyone knows that high ground is good. But certain classes use high ground differently. Range classes want the high ground because they can just keep shooting you while you can't, while you take the time to get up to them. We are specifically using high ground to be able to jump twice the distance and catch unsuspecting players who think that they have a gap on you. You get to high ground on every map if you can whenever you're fighting a wizard or caster class warlocks aren't so bad because a lot of them are playing a lot more melee um rangers stuff like this the reason for that is like i said because you can jump double the distance and then you can catch them with the achilles strike from your lantern and or your weapon flat out the reason why i'm using the bardiche over the zwei hander right now is because the poking ability of the zwei hander and the bardiche are the best parts of those weapons the zwei hander poke is on the third swing, which is too long to be waiting for this for the swing. The reason why you want the poke on the second swing is twofold. Number one, it lets you kill mobs quicker um, because you can almost always land the headshot with the poke rather than um, the double horizontal. And it technically comes out slower in numbers, but faster in actuality if you're not panning your camera with this Y-hander because the hit starts way off to the side. Second, is the reason why the Bardish is the best right now is because it is extremely good versus shield users. Because shield users, currently, you can hit them over the head, you can hit them on the head with the first hit from the Bardish, and at the same time, the Bardish will break their guard if you hit the shield. Yeah. So you get a headshot and a shield break, shitter. and then on top of that, God, once their shield is broken, you come up for the follow-up poke, you can just poke them in the head. I'll show you guys clips of me doing this from the tournament. And that is why mainly I'm using the Bardiche. Second off, because they've switched the Goblin Canes back to the 3x3, three three, there's a lot more areas in the map that are unfriendly to Zweihander than there are to areas that are unfriendly to the Bardiche. Most of the problems from the Bardiche can be manipulated by you simply crouching and looking down, which is significantly easier than panning your camera in the middle of a fight way to the left or right because you're hitting like a, a, a piece of rock and resetting your combo is extremely deadly in uh, high stakes games. As far as the guide for duos, this is mainly a solo guide. Duos still functions the same, but there's some different principles to keep in mind. And I will try to make another video. Sorry, I will make another video. Yeah, keep fucking playing Warlock, you fucking um, shit stain. Within the following week, if you caught the stream yesterday, me and my dual partner, Smash Potato, who was playing a level three wizard, killed probably 20 guys that were decently geared. And we were basically playing in mid gear. So we didn't die once. 
fully, the two of us, I don't think, while we were playing. Um, when I was playing Barbarian the second time. The first time, I did die once, and then we switched to fighter because I was trying to level my fighter. I didn't die once after that because I kind of understood the difference um, in my duo partner. I think when you're playing duels, your top two uh, classes to be with you are, or three classes, we'll say, are either uh, Wizard, Bard, or another form of range Get damage out, that is consistent, not Fighter. I think Fighter is too slow to play with Barb right now, so you either want some sort of like Ranger multi-shot, um, survivable guy, Bard, which I already said, playing that kind of style rather than just playing like straight up buff style, and then uh, Wizard. Warlock is okay, but Warlock you lack a little bit now if you're not playing full caster. And if you're playing full caster, you Warlock right now, you're kind of shooting yourself in the leg because we'll play your dork lock and currently what's lobby. happening is you're dying to survival bow. <laughs> it's a little like the true damage from survival bows is kind of shitting on your class a lot. So you got to be careful of that. And Rogue is no good in duos. I don't think as your duo partner, if you're running Rogue with a different a part pair, you might be okay. But yeah. So we'll uh, show we're you some stuff. On the ladder, like we're playing and uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to come by the stream or join my Discord with the link in the description. And yeah, we can I can help I'm you as best as I can loser, man. Um, with uh, current yeah. setups. So Guess what, thanks guys losers. for watching and Keep playing that fucking bullshit. catch you in the next one. Peace. God. Keep Crazy. I was crazy once. They locked me in a room. A rubber room. A rubber room with rogues. The rogues made me crazy. Crazy. I was crazy runs. Oh, fitting. Ratty McRatface. Well, I hope you enjoy your trip back to the lobby, Ratty McRatface.